All right, guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. I had a request uh, some time ago from uh, Bud Helgeson. He was talking about Bluebeam review and uh, doing some automated estimating using custom columns in Bluebeam. It's something I know a lot of you have at least expressed interest in doing, um, but maybe that some of the idiosyncrasies within Bluebeam kind of tripped you up. I know they tripped me up when I first tried it, so I've got it set up now. Uh, I thought I would record a quick video kind of demonstrating just how that works and some of the things that you have to do to make that work. And with that, let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I've got Bluebeam open and available here. And I have created over here what's, what I call my estimating toolbar. I will include this in the files. Um, one of the important things about this is that in order to get this all to work, you have to fill out certain fields of the properties, which I'll go over shortly. Um, but it's important that you want to create this toolbar with all of those things pre-filled in to kind of make your life easy. Now, most estimators know that once you, you're going to use the same beam sizes, same things frequently on a project. So you're going to create a toolbar and all of those things are going to be available at a click, whether it's, you know, a stud count, whether it's a beam size, a column size, whatever else it happens to be, you want those all in your estimating toolbar. You can even go so far as to create new toolbars for each job. And I'll show you how to do that coming up. Uh, but let's dig in here. Let's show you. So this is a W18 by 35 that given some length. Now, uh, the first thing that you have to do is make sure to set your sale, your scale correctly at each page. Um, you can usually these days anyways, rely fairly heavily on the scale that's given on the contract drawings. Um, but you'll want to test it as well. If you're doing estimating, uh, by measuring two points. Now, the engineer being the wonderful person that they are on this project decided not to provide any of the grid dimensions. So I can't do that readily here. Um, but it's not really important to the conversation. So we'll kind of skip right over it. All right. So here's a W18 by 35 that we need to do a takeoff for. So I'm going to go ahead and click my W18 by 35 tool. I'm going to go from center to center of column. Okay. And then you will see, okay. That I've highlighted the beam. I tell what it is, how long it is. And here you can see that it's calculated the weight of that piece automatically. Now, as part of these custom columns, you can add in all sorts of other fields to this. I've tried to keep it simple um, so that you can follow this really easily, uh, but you can put a cost in here as well. Let's say $538, okay? And you can increase the quantity, okay? You'll see that down here, all of that is updating. Weight total is calculating based on the number that I've selected. So if I go back down to two or one, the weight updates automatically. So how does it work? How do you make this happen? All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your custom columns. Okay. It's right next to the columns thing. You Let's say a lot of times, so I'm going to take you all the way through this, just in case you're going to click on the little blue nubbin the nipple, if you will, you go to the next to columns and you're going to click the settings wheel Okay, ignore all of this for the time being, you're going to go over to custom columns. Okay. And you'll see all of these columns are what showed up in my properties. So how do you get that special information in there? All of that weight table stuff. Well, there's two ways. The first is just import the custom columns that I'm going to link down below there in the show notes. Uh, but if you kind of want to know how it works, You've had to import a the data under sizes so that you can list all of these different things. What I did is I took the AIC shapes database and I narrowed down the fields. Okay, and I'll show you how that looks. So when you press modify, it brings up the properties, and you have to select type choice to get all of this data imported here. Now what you do is you simply press the import button and it's going to let you pick up a CSV file. Okay, CSV file for those who may not know is basically an Excel file kind of dumped down into CSV, which is a uh, comma separated values. Uh, but Excel can save down to it. So what should that data look like when you import it? Here is a sample spreadsheet that I've used to make some other columns. Okay. You notice that we have three columns in this. Okay. So this one is going to translate to the item. This one is going to translate to the subject. 
And then this is going to translate to the number or the actual value that you're going to get. You want to leave the default blank for these. Otherwise, it's going to default to something um, if it can't find something of that value. And I'll go more into that later. All right, so you're going to, if you want to put your own shapes data in base in there for whatever reason, it's important that you follow these things. You get one, two, and three fields. The value is going to end up being the third column, whatever you want it to calculate to, whatever you want it to do formulas with. Okay. All right. So one of the important things in this is that your subject has to match the item. It's going to look for that. When you go ahead and, and type in a new shape, it's going to look at that subject and make sure, and then it's going to fill out the item based on that. Okay. So you'll see that each of these are automatically already has its weight per foot filled in. If you wanted a different property, you would have to grab that from there. Um, but you could also find multiple things based on the subject. Um, so if you wanted to fill out all the different properties of a W21, you could add a bunch of columns and pull in this number data from all of them. Okay. Formatting is kind of just what you would expect it to be. All right, so now we've got that in, what do we do with it? So after that, okay, this is an important step. And this was a step that kind of tripped me up for a little while. So you'll, you'll want to pay attention here. The, the, your formulas that you're going to make in your other columns to kind of calculate that total weight can't just go right to size and pull that number. For whatever reason, because that's a choice, it's going to give you a little bit of an error. So what you need to do is create a formula. This one I've called weight data. If you go in there, you'll see that all it does is refer to size. So it's going to go and pull that number, but now it's going to trick. It's going to Bluebeam looks at it as a number value instead of a choice value. So you can use it later to calculate your totals. Okay. So now you can go in and you can get a quantity field and a cost field. Uh, cost field is a separate thing I put in there. Uh, in case you want to just put a line item cost for something, let's say you put in a ladder and you just throw a thousand dollars on for every ladder, you can use that. Now you'll see here's your formula information. All right, and this is pretty simple actually. Um, you get your length, okay, and that has to be typed exactly like that. It's going to pull that from any measurement, okay. So if you draw a dimension, it's going to look at that length, um, and that length is in feet, okay. It is not in inches, so be careful there. Uh, and then weight data we talked about earlier is that formula which pulls the number data from size and then obviously multiplied by the quantity. And you click including totals, and then you'll see later, I'll kind of show you how that it totals up at each thing and each page, etc. Okay. So now once you're done with that, once you've created all these custom columns, what you want to do is make sure to press save to profile. Then every time you open up a new set of PDFs, all of these custom columns are going to come right in. You don't have to get to go and do this every time. Also, I recommend exporting your custom columns. Um, that way you, you know, if your computer crashes, make sure you have it backed up. You don't have to go through and do this all over again. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, display order is fairly obvious. That tells you which order these columns are in out here. All right, so that being said, we've highlighted W18 by 35, we've created it, and you can see it tab tabulated its weight, and not only that, but it totals by, by page the weight on that page. So if I went and I created on another page, let's say here, another a 21, 24 by 55, you can see that total that let's see here sort by 24 by 55 it's totaled that okay and you could later export all this data to excel or whatever else uh, access if you prefer i actually prefer access to really get meaningful information out of this you can really get kind of crazy um, with with totals and making this all work a little bit easier and but like i said you can see Kind of how the weight totals up per page right there so it provides a total weight per sheet uh, if you want to total up those weights across sheets you have to use the uh, the spreadsheet export feature 
And uh, I'll go into that probably in another video. Like it's, I don't want to make this, you know, too, too complicated. I want you to be able to digest it. All right. So how do I get from, I've got these custom columns created to, I have this toolbar. What do I do to get there? All right, let's go back to my previous sheet and I'll walk you through it. All right, so the, the natural in inclination is to create either a line, um, you know, a highlight or something like that to, to get this, this takeoff data. That is not what you want to do. Because you need that length field, um, you need to use a measurement. And what you'll do is you'll create a measurement. Okay. Let's say we go from here to here. As you can see, that looks nothing like you, what you want. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll go to its properties. Okay, the first thing you have to do is you're going to want to type your subject in here. So this is a W21 by 44. Okay, now as soon as you do that, you'll see down here that you can fill this in. Until that matches in that choice field, the subject, you're not going to be able to find this here. Okay. You're going to fill out the subject, and then it's going to fill in the rest of that data for you. Yeah. And then under label, as you can see, it doesn't say anything here. So for the label, you're going to want to go ahead and put W21 by 44 as well. Okay. Then from there, it's as simple as you change your color, you change your line types. And your line width, make it a little bigger, and you turn on highlight. And now you get yourself the W21 by 44. The highlighting looks nice. You can make sure having that kind of visual feedback that, yep, I put in the shape that I wanted to. For instance, here I can see, oh, that should have been a W21 by 50. Okay. Now, once you got that all done, okay. You're going to want to right click on it and you're going to select add to tool chest and then estimating. All right, after that, you're going to see, hey, this doesn't look the same. So if I click this now, it's just going to put in another one exactly like that. OK, what I want to do is I want to select it and I'm going to go to properties mode. And now when I select it, I can go ahead and put the W21 by 44 from here to here and I'm done. Now just to kind of demonstrate, you can once you have this in, this goes very, very quickly. You can do takeoffs of weight very, very fast. So one thing that I failed to mention while I was doing this part was that after you make those toolbar entries and you set that to properties mode, you should really go into the settings wheel of that and then press that and export your toolbar again so that if later, you know, your Bluebeam crashes or whatever else, you don't lose all that work. From time to time, make sure to do that because Bluebeam has been known to crash from time to time and you'll lose a whole bunch of that work setting up all of those different shapes the first time. And now you can see that, you know, our current weight on this page, let's just set my page here. I'm not used to working on a 1080p screen, so it's very hard to see all the stuff. All right. So you just see what this page has a lot of notes on it. But at the top of that page, you'll see the total value of all the weights of that. And you can see it update as I go through and add more stuff. Okay. So now once that's done, once you've got all your weights kind of figure, uh, what you can do is export your stuff by summary, CSV. And as you can see, we have now have that CSV data all in here. Now it's going to export everything. So you do have to do a little bit of work 
afterwards uh, to make this data into you know what I would call a bid but that is relatively easy uh, let's just take for instance just to kind of demonstrate that we'll go to sort sort by per foot you can see here are all the beams that we took off here's where they all are and it's even helpful sometimes it'll give you the page number if you've labeled your pages like a smart boy you can say all right on s1.30 there is this much weight and you can go and find those beams later when you need to check things on your bid for instance you know if you took off a ladder and you want to say okay i took off a ladder but i don't know where it is you can click on there and it'll give you the page information you can go find that ladder right away all right so that's the basics on how to use bluebeam to calculate the weights of you know steel shapes automatically there's a lot of tips and tricks that i'll try to get into more uh, you can do things like calculating the weight of a uh, plate by just putting in the length uh, you can use the area tool and then do the uh you know have it all automatically calculate the weight per foot but i wanted to start off super simple get you going and i think once you kind of understand the concept of how this works you you can do the stuff to kind of make it fit into your own estimating system very well. If you have questions, if you have comments, please let me know down in those comments. Try not to email me uh, personally, only because I want everybody else to be able to offer in too. So if you comment on it in the YouTube down below in the comments, then if somebody else has a creative solution, they can offer that to you directly. Whereas I, of course, do not know it all. Especially with Bluebeam, I am kind of, you know, a, a learner as well. This, the version of Bluebeam that I'm using is 12.6. Uh, we bought that a long time ago and uh, we've been happy with it ever since. So we have not updated yet. I've heard good things about 2019, but we will see. So as always, we'll see you back here on the Steel Pit.